Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. So this week we're going to take a look at delegate call attacks. There's different ways to interact with another contract using call or using delegate call depending on if you want it to behave like you're importing a library or if you're making an external call to an API and just returning something. We're going to take a look at those differences and how it can be dangerous to use delegate call if it's set up incorrectly. So hopefully you're coming from the blog. If you're not, please go read that as that's where we teach all the concepts. And this is just a walkthrough of the code where we don't really go too deep as far as the learning goes. We're more reinforcing what we learned. So in front of me is part of the contract you should have already typed out. And this is the logic contract. All this is really doing is returning an address. And the address that it's returning is the address this. This is just the context of who's calling it. So if you're using a delegate call into this contract, you should see the address of the calling contract. If you're using a call, it'll actually call into here and process in the context of this logic contract and it will return that. So based on how you call it, that's the address that you're gonna get. We'll show exactly how that works when we put the calling contract in here and then we execute the functions. But right now I just wanna cover one other thing in this contract that you might not have seen before. I'm not sure if we covered it. And that would be the event. And all the event does is create a log of something. In this case, we're gonna create a contract address log that shows the address, this right here. And down here, after we run this and we set the variable, instead of returning it to ourselves, we're just gonna emit an event called contract address with the address in the context of who's calling it. And to show that, now let's paste in the contract code from the calling contract. Within the calling contract, we have two simple functions, print my delegate address and print my call address. And they're only doing one thing each, and that's calling into the print address function from the logic contract. But they're doing that in different ways. So the first one here is using a delegate call and the second one is using a call. There are also two other things in this contract that you may not be familiar with as we haven't looked at them before. The first one being ABI encode with signature. This is simply an encoding mechanism that you can use before sending your data using calls and delegate calls, similar to encoding web calls with base64 except that the delegate call only accepts a single unpadded bytes argument that's handled by this ABI encode with signatures. The other thing that you'll notice is that we have two contracts in the same file. Usually we do a copy paste and we add our address of the contract we're interacting with when we're doing interfaces and then create an interface. In this case, we're gonna grab the logic contract address via this new logic contract and put it in an address variable that we can then use with logic pointer. So this automatically handles for us grabbing the address that we need to interact with the other contract. This is very, very useful when we're doing testing as we don't have to copy paste it every time we deploy it. And then what we're doing is logic pointer, which is the address to this contract, and then we're making a call via that. So hopefully that makes sense. It's really not that complicated. And now let's just go over the example and see what the output is so we can solidify the difference between call and delegate call so you understand exactly what it's doing before we show an attack with it. With this file selected, let's compile it. And then we'll head down to deploy. And you'll see that we have our deployed contract down here. And this is the calling contract address, not the logic contract address. What we're gonna do is we're gonna run these two functions and we're gonna see what the output is. So first, if we hit print my call and we take a look at the log file, you'll see our emit statement here and it says contract address, args, and then it has 04ED. Now, if we look at our calling contract address, that's not our calling contract address. Our calling contract address is 0x07b. And that's because this is the address of our logic contract. When we make a call with call, we're actually calling into it kind of like it's an API and everything is getting processed within the logic contract in the context of the logic contract. So we get the logic contract address. Now, if we were to do a print my delegate call and we take a look at those logs and we look at the emit statement here, 
and we get back 0x7b4. So that actually matches up with our calling contract, 0x7b. And the reason for that is when we're using a delegate call, it's kind of like we're importing the functionality into the context of our calling contract and we're running this logic contract within our calling contract and it can make changes directly to variables in our actual calling contract. So when we actually run address this, it sees itself as being part of the calling contract, which is why we get the calling contract address back. And this becomes dangerous when variables don't match up. And we're gonna take a look at that in the next video where we show a bit about unintended memory overwrites. In the meantime, hopefully you learned about the differences between call and delegate call that we can use in attacks going forward. In the next video, we'll talk about overwriting memory with delegate call, followed by an example of an on-chain attack where this was actually used. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next one.